Aha! Fresh, you need that. Hello guys, it's 2 p.m. on the dot, and it's a Friday. Uh, welcome you to the Lunch and Learn, hosted by yours truly, Prosper Tarovinga, and I'm hoping that today you are, you know, going to be uh, really excited with what I have in store for you guys. All right, so over the week, I've been receiving a lot of questions from um, people like yourself, because if this is your first time watching this Lunch and Learn, you should know that I actually help coaches and consultants and service providers, and especially people that want to start, scale, and grow a business so that they have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I work with... Um, small tire companies up until you know coaches and consultants that are actually grossing up to a million dollars i also just recently signed up a really big um multi-level multi-international company oh my mouth was about to get rinsed with what i was about to say yes a multi-international company where i'm going in as a consulting basis this is my first sort of consulting role um, that I've gotten with such a really big company so I've learned quite a lot I've um, you know you know yeah yeah experienced quite a lot in the ages so in the time that I have been around I've been asked a lot of questions guys by people like yourself that want to know what it is they can do to actually start scale and grow a business that is actually uh, profitable and enjoyable so I've compiled about 15 questions for today so that you too can get to learn what's actually happening what's actually working and I hope by the end of this show today you're gonna become a marketing marvel a lot of people are not going to know what hit you you know why because everybody else is just mainstream out there and they're copying what the next guys are doing all right nobody is actually really thinking outside the box so if this is what you're after today's show is going to be the best one for you all right so if you're watching this on youtube don't forget to subscribe all right every single day monday to friday we come up with uh ticks and trips and Trips that are designed to help you market, scale, and grow your business. Mko ba chapaya? Ziri say. Dimga magad shani rams we Friday. It's bobo. Um, yeah, so without further ado, like I said, guys, this is going to be a very long one. Simran, how are you doing today? Today, I'm going to be answering questions that I've been receiving throughout the whole week. Okay? And some of them, um, some of them are a little bit complex. But I want you to hang in there. You know why? Because the nuggets that I'm going to be throwing in today... Most of them, you won't find them anywhere else on the, on, on, online, and they are going to boost your business with this simple how-to uh, marketing strategies, all right? So if this is, you know, you trying to scale a business, share this video with those that might mean something to you. Bring everybody in so that we can, you know, start, start with the questions. There's about 15 of them, so I'm going to try and really, really uh, go fast on them. Now, the first one says... What's the best way to determine the market for my business and whether it's in demand? Now, a lot of people have uh, this question. You know what I mean? People don't know if their business is going to work or if anyone is going to want to buy their products. So the question says, what's the best way to determine the market for my business and whether it's in demand? The first thing you got to do, guys, is to actually test out the, 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 the market or the product. The customers that are going to be paying you are the ones that are going to vote for your existence with their wallets. All right. So everybody might have their own marketing idea or you got to go out and just do ads or whatever. But without a market that's actually going to pay for your services, who are you going to be advertising to? All right. So everybody might have their own sort of marketing forte. Some some of you guys might just be really good at networking or you're just really good with PR. But if you are not actually converting if people are not paying for your products if people are not actually supporting you with money then maybe there's something that you need to do with your products all right so you need to either brush up on your advertising basics or improve on your marketing research or whichever way so this show today i'm really going to be going in dip and looking at things like that all right so whether you are just starting on your business or whether you've you know been running for a few years research is a vital aspect that's going to determine if the market is going to buy your product or your service 
all right? And also, research is going to keep you abreast with the changes that are going to affect the way the market actually receives your product, all right? If you're not in connection with your audience, if you're not in connection with the people that will actually pay you to survive as a business person, then you're wasting time. A lot of us get too romantic about what we are creating, about how the website looks, about how I sound online or whatever, instead of actually putting out that product so that people can determine if they want it or not earlier on in production phase. All right. So once you get too romantic about an app idea, before you know it, iPhone iOS changes the algorithm and you automatically have to move on to the next thing or oh, somebody comes up with a better idea and you, you, you're no longer playing the market. You've wasted time, money and effort while being romantic about th something that you think works when the market doesn't need it. All right. So research will also help you identify, you know, the best prospects that will actually pay. Some some ideas are good. But is the market willing and able to pay for that idea? Do you know what I mean? So, you know, you will then educate your... Um, Cabrini, how are you doing? Thanks for tuning in. You will then educate your audience, you know, by researching what it is that they actually want. All right? And what is it that they need? And then you will then notify them what to expect off of you. A lot of businesses are dying because the market doesn't know they exist. The market doesn't know what they're serving. All right. So when you do the research, you will know how to actually put your message out there and put out your information out there so that people actually know what type of products and what type of services they can expect from you, when to buy it and how to buy it. And you can also then figure out if these people are willing to pay for such a service. There's so many ideas out there, but maybe some people just don't want to pay for them. All right, so there's two types of research um, that I know that you should conduct. The first one is obviously primary research and secondary research. All right, so secondary research is usually information that you get from an outside source. All right, so the easiest way to do a research is um, maybe you can purchase studies that have been done before. Your idea might sound very unique to you, but it's, there's nothing that hasn't been done before. It might just be a newer version of doing an old thing, all right? So you might be able to find firms that were doing that before, and you can, you can actually locate published um, information in newspapers, in magazines, or in the internet, all right? You need to figure out who your target audience is and find out what magazines they're reading. I'll show you something real quick. I know that my target audience are people that are interested in property, all right? So I go in and I subscribe to the property magazines, and then I find out what else they're reading besides the marketing stuff. What does this do? These guys have already established, they've already established their audience. They've already established what these people want. They've already established what holidays they can go to. They've already established what things interest this, um, you know, this particular audience. They've invested millions upon millions trying to discover this whole, um, you know, trying to discover their market. Okay, so all you do is just tap into that. Look at the way they write their articles. Look at the way they write the headlines. Look at who they're trying to porch and attach. Um, you know their products too and then just go for those people it even gets better if you write to these magazines and pretend as if you want to advertise in those magazines you know what they'll do they will send you a copy of the demographies of the people they are marketing to now guess what that information is that's the research that they have done so much stuff before and prior Cabrini says hi is anyone else watching him give him some likes or hearts Cabrini, thank you so much. You can share this video if you want to. All right, so make it a habit of actually reviewing, you know, these publications. When you see them, or, you know, in Woolworths or whatever shop, just pick up one that your next client or your potential client can actually um, be reading. All right, so when you start looking at this, they've already done all that research. You know, you just read the information that they're offering, who they're talking to, and just don't forget to scan the type of ads that they're putting in there as well. And looking at the editorial content, you know, for new and competitive products and services that your target audience is already being exposed to, all right? So you wanna search the internet regularly for, you know, you know, preference, um, 
whatever is changing within the demography, you want to make sure you're the first person to know what your audience is reading, who they're watching and who they're listening to. You know, you can find all of this free in the magazines like the one that I've just showed you. And you can also do this nowadays. It's easier if you go on um, Facebook groups or LinkedIn groups or forums online. You know what I mean? So just frequent, you know, the, where your client and your audience is. Because if you just go out there and throw out ads without knowing what your particular client needs, it's not going to help you. Look at this. A 24-year-old woman who is a career woman, is working a 9 to 5, is totally different to a 24-year-old mother of three. They're the same age, they're the same sex, but they're totally different needs. You know why? Because the 24-year-old with three kids likes Peppa Pig and the 24-year-old with no kids likes Gary Vaynerchuk. How can you then talk to these two people as if they were one person? So you need to figure out what your clients are really looking at, what they're focusing at, who they're listening to. And when you get that, go into their head, their psyche with that language and it's easy. It just feels natural. You don't feel like you're selling. All right. So that's pretty much um, how to answer what's the best way to determine the market for my business and whether it's in demand. Make sure you put it out to the market. The market is the one that then decides with their wallet. All right. And then you also can do some sort of primary research. So, you know, research is where you, you go on. a You can do a telephone survey. You can do polls. You can just ask people randomly, people that you think are your ideal customers or your current customers right now. Just ask them, why are you watching my stuff? Why are you listening to me? What can I do better? So this can be a cheaper way because you know what? These people have already paid you money. All you're doing is just figuring out how to do more of that. So never get too romantic about a website or an app or whatever you're creating if the market hasn't voted for it. Do you know what I mean? And if I want to test if you guys are actually really liking this stuff, please share this video. Just share it right now. And then we're going to question number two. Now, question number two says, how can I determine if there's a need for my business in my local area? I've been conducting my own market research by asking local people in my area about my idea and I've gotten a huge positive response. And I think there's a large market for my idea, but I'm not sure how to begin the process. OK, so this sounds like Sally or Jude who's just asked his uncle I mean, her uncle or her brother or her sister or the lady that plays bingo with her grandmother if their new makeup looks good on her. All right. What you really need to do is you might have a hunch about, you know, the, the, the need for an idea, uh, an idea that you might have within your local area. But you got to research a little bit further. All right. Asking your uncle or your dad or your sister or your brother, they won't tell you what's wrong with the product because you know what? They don't want to hurt your feelings. All right. So there's more data that you can actually uncover um, to actually support your decision making by going to um, the extent of, you know, really, really asking people within your community. All right. You should actually really cover your bases thoroughly by examining quite a lot of different information sources people that are not just going to say yes because they're afraid of hurting your feelings all right so you you want to go in uh, you know once you've actually really squeezed out more details you know from from the people that are close to you it's easy to then maybe ask people in confidentiality because a lot of people are going down in business because the only research they did was people that care about them all right. So if you really want to ask people that are going to pay for you, you need to ask the whatever industry you're in. Find there's usually a trade association or there's usually an, an industry association or a group. All right. So find out from them if they have any sort of research reports or survey that were done from from prior people that wanted to do the same business. There's always information about something you know, that you're looking for if you search hard enough. So all this information could have been from the resources that, you know, local hobbies, people that, you know, like a certain hobby or shop owners or people that really sport trends within within your small area there, you know? 
Find out from those people, especially those people that are really vocal within your area. Those industry experts, you know, business managers or business, um, you know, development consultants, have they ever come across an idea like yours? Has it ever worked within, you know, your area then? And I know also you can actually hire interns. People that are doing an MBA would be more than happy to do a market research for you, usually for free. So you can actually look out for people that are about to graduate so they can use your business as an example. There is, you know, look in your local area there if there's no MBA programs that they actually list out students so that they get real world experience. So you can use your business as a testing board or a sounding board from somebody who is actually doing an MBA. And guess what? You could always hire them when, when you're finished with them anyway. Do you know what I mean? Because that's the reason they're going to, 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 to learn that. There's always business research centers within any community. Here in Melbourne, I think there's a couple of business research centers that you can also um, approach. And these are nationwide. So, and the information is free. But a lot of people are not doing the research that is needed in order to actually know if their idea is viable. Another way of really finding out if your idea has never been sort of um, done before is looking at old or current telephone books. All right. So a shop may not be existing, you know, within that area, you know, today, especially. But are you sure there's never been one in that area before? Do you know what I mean? So you might look at that phone book and see the category. Also, you may also be surprised that there's people already doing what you're doing. They might be calling it different. So in your local area there, you will find that there's already competition and there's already people that are already taking customers from you. All right. So you want to make sure that that's that sort of level of research of finding out exactly who your customer is, exactly who they're listening to and exactly how you can best serve them or steal them from the existing competition. You know, once you know how much competition exists within your area, you know, you can then, you know, move in knowing exactly what to expect and what people are listening to and do exactly the opposite of that. So if you don't have these old phone books, you can easily go to your um, library. I think I've got one that I borrowed that I need to put back just to find out who else within my area is doing exactly what I'm doing. That's the kind of level of research you really want to do if you want your business to last for the next five years. Okay, so so pretty much there's so much that you can possibly do, but you can always do this market research for less than you could possibly uh, think of. But the problem is we're getting lazier and lazier and we're just hoping and spraying with our marketing and then that's when we're getting it wrong. Okay, question number three. Question number three says, as a one person enterprise, what would you say would be the best way to attract clients? Grab them by the. <laughs> oh, that's a funny one. Have you also got any questions there, guys? Mm. All right. So question number four says, if I'm the only person as a one person enterprise, what would you say would be the best way to attract clients? OK, guys, the key is to set up a yearly marketing program or a monthly marketing program that you just market or that you just, you know, manage along with small daily operations um, of your daily business. All right. So if you put your whole marketing out like that, you know where you want to be, you know how much you want to make at the end of the year, you just stretch it out through the whole year and then just do daily activities or daily operations to grow market and scale your business all right so you should actually expect to do um maybe up to 40 percent of your time every single week it should just be marketing all right what does cabrini say i'd love to hear your take on my new movement oh, exactly let's talk after this show all right cabrini watch until the end and then we'll talk after this show all right so you know all you should realize is when, when, you're, when you're studying a business, right, there's different levels where your customers are, you know, present, okay? So, you know, there's three kinds of prospects. There's really cold leads, people that don't even know about you, people that don't even know you exist, 
And then there's warm people that have heard about you, but they have not really convinced themselves that they want to buy from you. And then there's hot leads, people that are ready to pay you the, right this instant. All right. So you should know what stage your customers are. Okay. And you should be taking them, you know, from those little touch points and making sure that you're feeding them with information that is relevant to the stage in that sales cycle they are in. So if you really want to create an effective marketing program, you should actually plan activities that reach out to these three different people at three different, um, you know, parts of the sales cycle, you know, and like I was saying, cold prospects may be a bit qualified, may be ready to purchase from you, but they know, you know, they, they know very little about your company. They know very little about what you offer and they know very little about your capabilities. So you've got to warm them up with well-directed or targeted, um, you know, content, you know, maybe a blog or a podcast or anything that you're going to be using to bring them up until they're warm. All right. Because nobody's just going to see your stuff today and then it's, it, it automatically make a purchase. Ros, thank you for tuning in. You know, so there's going to be a lot of, you know, um, digital marketing. There's going to be a lot of advertising. There's going to be a lot of public relations. Do you know what I mean? Whatever form of media you're going to be using to make those people reach, I mean, to make your message reach that market. So you need to have at least a marketing plan that drives these qualified prospects to your website. Now, there's warm prospects. These are people that have probably been following you. I've known of people that can follow you for up to eight months. You know, so they're midway uh, through your sales cycle because a lot of things might be happening. Maybe somebody doesn't have the money today or they're not yet quite convinced about your capabilities. So they will just keep following up until they see something that will help them latch onto your work. So you really need to start motivating them. You need to add more personalized marketing tools, you know, like the blueprint. Do you know what I mean? You're engaging them at that particular time. You're educating them. You're providing value and you're inspiring them. Do you know what I mean? And, and during that time, you're sending them newsletters, a few presentation tools here and there, and you just got to continue advertising to those people so that you are constantly in their face and being the person that they can actually trust to serve them from their problems. So you can choose. Maybe you want to do a bit of PR. You want to do a few marketing strategies here and there. All right. So you should also not confuse your hot prospect with the rest of the other guys. These people are ready now to just give you their wallet. So these people have been moved all through from the cold part to the warm and now they're absolutely hot and they're ready to pay you. And most of the times these are people that have come in as a referral or you know what I mean? As a, as a, as a, as a referral and those people already know, like, and trust you. So if you're maybe selling a service or something like that, personal selling is usually um, when you make that sell or when you book somebody on a one-on-one -on -one is when you actually just add that final hit to close that sale. So you need to figure out how do you have all strategies to take somebody from a cold lead, warm lead up until they're hot and then you sit down with them and close that sale. Okay, so it's one of those things that you should know what your stages are and how you as the one person are going to be conducting those in order to sell, close all those sales as soon as they come in. All right, so it's not going to be difficult whether you're one person or there's a team around you as long as you've got a marketing program that you can tell, you know, when when we just by looking that this person is still a cold lead, this person is still a warm lead, and this person is ready to be closed. But some of you guys are not really doing that, so why bother? Question number four. How do I market my business to prospective customers on a daily basis on a shoestring budget? I think this was Sally, and this is a very good question. All right. How do I market... Um, to prospective customers on a daily basis on a shoestring budget. This is the problem that a lot of us are getting. Like I said in the video yesterday, if you haven't watched the video from yesterday, 
Um, you, you can go and watch it a little bit el- uh, later. Uh, Jamie, thanks for tuning in, buddy. All right. How do you market consistently to prospective customers on a daily basis and especially when you're broke? Because when you're starting, you don't have that much money. All right. So if you know exactly who your customer is, if you know exactly what they want, all you got to do is give them the kind of information that will help them convert. All right. Because as you know, guys, people are coming to the Internet to get information. So if you're the person that's providing them with that information, they get to know, like and trust you. But not everybody is just going to purchase right from the get go. If that was the case, man, there wouldn't be any need for any marketing. You just go to the shopping center and be like, hey, you buy my stuff. Okay, so maybe you're already right on with your, um, you obviously want to be making sales every single day. Do you know what I mean? And research says that customers need to hear your message at least six to nine times before they even want to deal with you. That then makes, you know, name recognition, brand awareness, and they can recall your name just by hearing it. So because it takes up to nine times, you constantly have to be out there in the battlefield, really making sure you are making a difference to your customers. Because remember, they're coming in from cold, warm, and you got to make them hot and ready to buy. So if you're just going to be a one click wonder or just do a one time or sporadic tactic, it's going to be ineffective because you know what? These people are not going to be aware of you. They're not going to accept your stuff and they're not going to prefer you over the other competition that's around you. And if you've done your research and looked in the phone book, you will notice that you're not the only person doing what it is that you're doing. So you really got to start hooking up, not hooking up, but marry your brand and make marketing a habit. All right, so that you're out there every single day, whatever you're doing, whether you're just hanging out with your kids, you've got business cards, everybody gets to know who you are, what it is that you do, and you can do it for as little as under $4 a day. But some people decide they just want to pay hundreds of dollars for that one, you know, campaign, and they're not campaigning every single day. That blog, that podcast, every single thing that you're putting on your social media is putting you a little bit closer to the, to the customer, putting their hands in their pocket so that they can give you some money. All right. So, you know, it's just a basic strategy for where you maybe you can start by doing this. This is what I do. And this is the one reason why you are in my friend list today. I reach out to at least 10 people that I think I can help every single day. All right. And then I send you out a friend request. What happens? You then get into my ecosystem. When you're in my ecosystem, you get to see what I'm doing. See a few of these lives. And then I present to you my blueprint. You get attracted to it. And then you just type in blueprint at at the bottom there. You know why? Because you now want to be a part of what I'm doing. All right. This is the part where you get to type blueprint. Because, because when I put this out, you, 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 you would want it. And, you know, we just play along the charade like that. So type in Blueprint so that you know how to actually capture the right kind of clients, give them the right kind of content, and then convert those people and let alone just connect with those people so that they become customers that will make your business profitable and enjoyable. All right? So there's, there's always going to be a daily thing that you've got to do about your business. You know, putting out um, a, a bit of content here and there, Calling people on the phone, emailing them, sending out pod, uh, postcards, doing Facebook Live like this, um, you know, either doing it on Periscope or just simply being good human being and people get to know, like and trust you and eventually you become part of what they're doing and you become part of their ecosystem. All right. So this wouldn't really, really uh, cost you much. you whole goal is to actually just create a combination of daily activities that will help you communicate with your existing client base as well as your potential customers. Kevin, Oliver, how are you doing? Thanks for tuning in. All right. And you can do this really, guys, for like less than four bucks a day. All right. Some of the things that you can do is just send your existing customers, you know, a referral for, for if they buy more than they ever do. 
just devote some energy to reselling to your to 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 resell stuff to your current customers again and again you know why because it's actually cheaper to get um you know to 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 convert people that have already bought from you than it is to convert people that want to buy new stuff from you all right it's easier to get um you know somebody who's bought from you already than to get a new customers so just send people that have bought from you you know some sort of a letter to say thank you so much for being a good customer what else can i do for you or who else can you refer to to my services do it maybe monthly or whatever and then they you know would find it within themselves to see if they cannot refer you to to their friends and relatives you know and also invite them to you know special events that are happening within your your industry treat them like family treat them like friends you know why because they're going to be affording you the lifestyle that you want they're the people that are going to be paying for your holidays they're the people that are going to be putting your kids through college so you got to treat them as if they're people not just hashtags all right another way that you can actually do this is introducing yourself to the media guys you know, there's always free publicity out there. There's a there's a mob called H A R O. I think it's called Help a Reporter Out. This can boost your business so much more than you could ever think of. I'll show you a few things that I've done earlier on. Yeah, you can see that. That's me and my little girl there. We were in the newspaper. So you know what that does. You know, if people start seeing you in all these different places, in all these different locations, you know, it, it just creates that sense of trust. Because if the media can trust you, then you must be, you know, if the media can trust you, then you must be a really, really good person. All right. So free publicity can, it also has a potential to actually boost your business. So you can maybe contact your local newspaper and, you know, just offer to lend them expert costs or or you know stuff that you already know that your business can solve do you know what i mean just put up a press release you know and just have it handy just in case you know it's needed on a on a, on a, on a rainy day find out from your customers where what newspapers they're reading or what publications they're reading and try and advertise in there or just try and be in those sort of um, you know media spaces and if you've got a physical uh, location, invite people to actually come to your, to your place. You know what happens with that? It creates user-generated content. Because people have become so desensitized, you know, everything is just happening from online like this, right? So what you want to do is just bring people within your periphery and make sure that you, you know, they, they get to create content, taking pictures of themselves within your place. So that you're not just, you know, out there going, look at me, look at me, look at me. No, you would be um, having people talking about you. And that's even powerful more than you saying, look at me, look at me. When somebody else talks about you. All right. But you've got to be consistent, guys. That's the reason why every day at 2 p.m. AEST, I come in, I show up on this live. It is actually even uh, booked and blocked within my calendar. You've got to show up every single day. All those people that are copying and pasting that stupid um, status update saying, oh, you guys like Beyonce, oh, you guys like uh, Jay-Z and you don't support our stuff. It's because you're not showing up enough. People want something that they can latch onto. People want something that they can belong to. And people want things that they can trust. So if you're just going to be a one-click wonder, why would I want to share your stuff if you're not going to be there tomorrow? Do you know what I mean? You've got to be consistent and just do something every single day for this program to actually work. And it's really easy to manage and it's things that you can actually do simply by just being yourself. So that's the reason why people tell you to, to, to go in for a job or a business that you're passionate about. Because if you're going to be doing it every single day, then it makes a whole big you know difference to the people that you attract and people get to know you for something and as much as we want to live private lives or whatever people want to be known that's the reason we get into this business for legacy for fame or just to be rich 
And those are the things that all the rich people or, 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 or the people that we envy have. And we want that. Secretly, we do. No matter how hard we try and refuse it. Nobody's going to be doing a business just so that, you know, they, they can do it for a charitable cause. That's not it. We're in it for the money. We're in it for the fame. So you might as well go out there and really reach out to the people that will help you get the things that you actually secretly want. All right. Cool. And there's another question. Question number five. I think we'll just end there, I think. Or do you want to keep going? Please type in there just so that I see that I'm not preaching to an empty theater. All right. Uh, Linda, hopefully you're having a good day. Number five says, do some kinds of advertising work better than others? Do some kinds of advertising work better than others? Just hang in there. Let's see. Do some kinds of advertising. Oh, Simran says, keep going. Okay. If you want me to keep going, then please share this video. And Cabrini says, I'm here. Okay, I see. And Jamie, please share this video so that I can keep going. You know, just so that it, it makes sense that um, we of what we're doing here. So the question was, Jamie, what's happening today is the whole week I've been receiving questions. So today I'm attempting to answer them. Okay. So if you also have a question there, let me know so that I can also include it. Um, the question number five was, do some kinds of advertising work better than others? Okay, so not all advertising is created equal. Look at my fingers. Look, this is my index finger. It's shorter than my root finger. My ring finger is taller than my pinky. So nothing is ever the same. Even if you look at clocks or watches, they all tell different times. People are different. Okay, so... Some things are tried and trusted, but for them to actually do work and actually produce results, okay, you got to put in the effort, all right? So all types are going to work if they are properly used and not just tried. Do you know what I mean? If you just dabble with something, obviously it's not going to work. It takes 21 years to be 21. It takes 45 years to be 45, all right? So one question that I normally ask guys is, how long does it take for somebody to be a pilot? Can you type it in there? How long does it take for somebody to be a pilot? And how long does it take for somebody to be a doctor? Now, why would you expect the internet to just be a one, you know, one hit wonder? Do you know what I mean? Why would you just expect the internet to just work like that? All right, so all types of advertising, they're going to work if they're used properly and not just tried. All right, so the fact that there's various forms of media that you can utilize, you know, and, and you know, depending on where you are, what area you're doing and what sort of products you're selling, no one kind of advertising is going to be superior than the rest. Do you know what I mean? Like media will always be you know, vi viable depending on who is using it and who is listening and is the message resonating to the market that is being shared to. That's why radio stations, they are different. They, they've got their own sort of audiences. Thank you so much, the guys that are sharing this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jamie. Radio stations themselves and TVs and, and buses, they all have different... Um, you know, genres of people that listen to them. And that is a specific audience that is targeted to. So any form of advertising, as long as it's reaching to the intended person, it works. All right. So it depends where you are. You might be just be working in a smaller area where you've got one radio station. It would make, you know, financial sense to actually advertise with that radio station because not a lot of people in that area are on Facebook. All right. So even TV stations, they're listing their products and their programs on Facebook or on newspapers and newspapers are using outdoor billboards to increase their circulation. So all of these different yiggity yaggity yaggity advertising things, there's not going to be a one hit machine that you're just going to plug in and voila, you've got it all. You know, so you probably, um, you know, notice that now there's a large number of people that are just flocking Facebook ads. And you know what? You're just making Mark Zuckerberg reach because your message is not directed to a market. 
Facebook ads is just the media. Figure out where exactly your audience is. Figure out exactly where your market is. Right. Jamie says having a TV station out to our event on Saturday. Exactly. There is still an audience. There's still people that are watching telly. Maybe one of those people has not even actually heard about you. So you really want to make sure, find out where your audience is. Or maybe your audience might be in magazines. You know, there's people that really enjoy receiving and, and perusing through magazines. They smell really nice. Do you know what I mean? So find out who is reading these magazines because they would have closed shop a long time ago if nobody was buying them. All right. So at the end of the day, never dismiss any media just because you are not having a, the correct message that's going to a targeted audience. So to use advertising correctly, guys, you need to make sure you've got the demographies right. You've got the location down packed and you've got a message that is going to that audience and you've got to be consistent. All right. So I've mentioned uh, demographies, right? For, for demographies, you must be able to define your customer base according to maybe their age, their gender, what groups they're in, etc., etc., and what media they are using, what devices, are they on Android, are they on Apple, all of that is a demography. Because not all the same people are the same, like I counted the fingers on my hand. My little pinky is not the same as the index finger. So that's exactly what humans are like. So gender is going to be either the male or female or these days there's transgender people that are coming out in the open. You got to know who you're talking to. Right. And then when you figure out the age range, depending on your business and what it is that you're doing, they might be different age sectors. And within those age sectors, like I mentioned earlier, a 24 year old corporate lady is totally different to a 24 year old housewife. So you got to make sure that your message is really hitting a target audience. And one other thing that you must remember all the time is your customer base can actually shift, you know, because people are growing up. So by the time you open, um, you know, your business and by the time it's June, maybe some people have crossed the boundary. So you got to constantly be figuring out if you are still talking to the right person. You know, so some people might just some some people might have moved, you know, areas or moved um, needs They you may have been advertising to them when they were in university. But now maybe they they joined the military or they're now working in a corporate uh, environment. You've got to always keep on top of what's happening because people are not just going to be stagnant. There's natural edging that is happening within the people that are in your community. You also have to factor that in. So you need to keep track of all these changes. Their needs change um, with the older they get. So this step is actually really crucial. And a lot of people don't really talk about stuff like this. They just say, oh, get the 12 to 15 age group or get the 24 to 34 age group. This step is actually really critical. You know why? Because it's the basis of every advertising decision that you can make. Because if you want to sell a camera like this, all right, you got to sell it to somebody that can hold it. If you're going to sell this camera to a 90 year old and they've got Alzheimer's or whatever, they can't handle this. Do you know what I mean? So people don't understand that not everyone is your customer. So if you're not absolutely sure who your customers are, you can waste a lot of time, money and effort advertising to the wrong choir, preaching to the wrong choir, which leads to you got to know where these people hang out. You got to know where these people are located. Some things that are happening around them might influence them to make purchases or some things might not influence them to make any purchase. Jamie says, goodness, my customer age group is 25 to 65, which is a challenge. Jamie, I'll tell you something from 25 to 26. There's already a big difference. Because with guys, maybe some are already having a big beard and some don't have a big beard. All right. Or some already have kids and some don't have kids. So 25 to 65 is too broad. Try and keep it within the 10, 10 year age group. 
And Tan, thank you so much for tuning in. All right? So, you know, at the end of the day, find out where these people are based. You know, find out, you know, you can ask your radio station or TV or publication, you know, representative to find out the demographics of the people that they are reaching out to. Like I said earlier on, you can write to magazines and pretend as if you want to advertise to them so that they send you the demographics of the people, where they're located and who is actually paying attention to them. They'll do that. All right. And then you can then utilize that in your marketing. All right. So never buy or never just, you know, choose when you're putting your Facebook ads there just based on your personal taste, because you know what? You could be actually creating mediocrity. Go in. There's people that have already researched the people you want to reach out to. Go in there. Find out exactly who they're talking to, how they're talking to them, and etc., etc. And one other thing that a lot of people do not quite have is they don't have a defined message that is going to that targeted audience. Guys, you should remember you only have a few seconds to tell your story, guys. Do you know what I mean? So you, you, you really, <laughs> you got to really squeeze the language, you know? You wouldn't, you know, when you're in trouble, you wouldn't be like, send assistance as soon as possible. You would yell out, help! You know, so you need to have a hook, you know, you need to have a good reason for somebody to come to your location instead of, you know, dealing with your competitor. You got to use a bit of copywriting. If you can't afford copywriting, you know, you got to start learning the language that your audience is speaking. You know, be, be very succinct i think that's the word for it just because the attention span of people is getting shorter and shorter so you want to make sure that you're actually reaching out with the right kind of message to the right kind of crew and people and one other thing i cannot stress out guys is frequency you can never get away with being a one click wonder all right without enough frequency guys your customers won't see or hear your message that's why you are always hearing a voice over and over and over and over and over and over again. This is why some of my posts work better than others. <laughs> yeah, I think you, you now know what's going on. So it's better to actually dedicate a substantial amount or a schedule or to actually schedule in marketing so that you don't forget. Because everybody's been caught up with being busy, but you're busy doing what when people are not buying from you? Hmm? Guys, whatever you, 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 you try to do, just try advertising and use it to get results. And use it specifically for the things that actually work for you. All right. Now, what do you want to do? Uh, question number five. Oh, no, that was question number five. I think that should be it. Do you guys that are watching right now have any questions? Or should we just go in and just stretch it out for an hour so that it actually is even? Because I still have four other questions that I can um, go on with. There's one that says, uh, Prosper, I created a flyer and I send it out to everyone in my 400 um, name email list. And I purchased uh, from a direct mail company and I saw no results. Then I bought a small ad in a trade magazine and once again, I got no response. How can I get a better response? So this is just basically what we're talking about. This person literally did not, you know, figure out who their target audience is. They did not do their research. They, they don't know who they're marketing to. They just bought a list and they're hoping that it would work. You really want to make sure that these people are people that have opted into something that you're offering. Okay, gone are the days that people that would, would, would sit around and open every email that come through, um, you know, to your, to your mailbox or whichever way it is. People don't do stuff like that anymore. All right. Okay. So another question is, I'm a sole proprietor. Um, just starting out, how much of my capital should I realistically allocate to public relations and how much... Can I secure regular public PR opportunities on a shoestrings budget? Okay, so like I mentioned, 
PR is really easy to get um, sometimes if you really know what you're doing. Um, half of the time is just going to websites like um, HARO, which is Help a Reporter Out. Um, or if you're in Australia, there's something called Source Bottle. Source as in tomato sauce, bottle as in a bottle. Um, most entrepreneurs know how to do it really, really well. So, you know, even if you don't have much to spend, just take heart. You know what I mean? You don't really need to go through a PR agent. There's amongst us, there's entrepreneurs that have podcasts. There's entrepreneurs that are doing videos like this. Just reach out and say, you know what? I heard you talking about this topic. Can I write about it to your audience or can I talk about it on your blog? Do you know what I mean? Reach out to other people because what we're seeing now is other entrepreneurs are seeing another entrepreneur as if they're competition. Nobody's ever your competition. All right. So if you don't have that much money, reach out to people, write emails to people that already have podcasts and they're talking to an audience that could be your own audience. OK, so, you know, you could just have few marketing uh, materials like having good business cards when you're out there. I know a lot of us have sort of thought that going into the digital age, you don't need business cards. But, you know, guess what? There's people like us that keep theirs. You know, just in case I meet somebody at the shops, I just give them my card and it's got my face on it so they will remember who it is. And, you know, lucky enough today, I actually gave somebody a, a business card ages ago and they remembered me today because they were short of people to come through to their BNI meeting. So I'm going to be exposed to, um, you know, a bunch of people that I wouldn't have been. You know why? Because I had a business card. You know, so have something like a letterhead or marketing piece such as a brochure or something like that, that you can give to people so that they can also um, just remember you or have something to hold on to that when whenever they they need something from you, they can remember you. So that's also really good uh, PR for yourself. All right. And when you're studying, guys, don't spend far too much money when you're in the advertising game. Really, it's funny to see the ads that we're seeing these days. Because if you really want to see that an ad is not working, when your competitor comes up with an if your competitor's ad comes up in the news feed, look at the people that have liked that ad. Usually it's people that are never going to purchase from him anyway. It's people that are like maybe in third world country. So you also really want to make sure that when you're really, really studying, guys, when you're really, really starting, just make sure you've got a message that is going to a market and it's being delivered through very good channels. All right. They, they're very, you know, ads can be very expensive and you get disheartened and you think you're failing in business. But it's not like that. Facebook now has board of directors, so they got to pay dividends to them. They're not going to care about your hundred dollars spend a day. You know, because you're not really scrapping the surface in actually finding out what your clients actually want. There are far better ways to actually promote yourself that you can use. One of them is to do Facebook lives like this. Speak, speak, speak. I get hired to speak. And if you would want to hire me to speak, talk to me after this. You can speak for free to audiences, you know, who are part of your target market. Do you know what I mean? You can go to the Rotary Clubs. Um, you know, Chamber of Commerce and Trade Associations, etc., etc. Public speaking engagements will give you instant credibility. All right. One other thing that you can do, guys, is write, write, write. Write about how to advise articles, you know, daily or weekly news um, newsletters or things like that. Write in your local magazines, write in local business magazines, whatever your niche is, be seen somewhere. Because what is going to happen when, when you're sleeping? You're going to have to continuously repeat yourself. No, I don't think so. Do you know what I mean? So you want to be seen where your customers are actually searching. So look out for the trade publications that, you know, you can be featured in, in any print or electronic newsletters, etc., etc. All that stuff is really, really important. Yeah, all that stuff is really, really important so that, you know, your, your target audience gets to know where you're at. If you can write like myself, hire a freelancer who can ghost write for you, you know, under your name. You can always do that on Fiverr up until, you know, that person gets your flavor and the way that you write and then continuously put stuff out there. 
That way when you have that content, it engages the people, it educates them, and you're providing value. Because you are paid in direct proportion to the amount of value that you bring into the market. Another way that you can do this, my friend uh, Bobby Baskaran is teaching a class right now. So you can find out if there's, you know, a local adult education program that might need your services. I know you won't get rich doing this, but teaching will give you valuable experience. And people would actually, you know, respect you a whole lot more. You know why? Because once you're talking about a topic, it means you know a thing or two about it. All right. And I keep reverting back to this, you know, call local reporters and and write to them or, you know, just find out what it is. Are they looking for news that you can talk on about? You can also start a newsletter, you can publish it, and then, you know, you create your own publicity. One of the things that a lot of you guys are not doing, you're not building strategic alliances. You know, you want to introduce yourself to other business people. Do you know what I mean? Even when you're watching a live like this, there's people that are regular people. Just go in, scroll through, say hi to whoever is watching. And you know, you know why? Because you are sharing the same experience with them. You'll have a thing or two to talk about. It, it, it breaks the ice already. All right. Detria, how are you doing? Hope you're having a fantastic day. So you want to introduce yourself to other business people who you're not competing with anyone because everybody is different. And you can also, you know, um, parlay with them in such a way that they can introduce you to their audiences and you can do the same to your audience. Offer to promote other people and they can also promote you. So if you want me to speak to your audience or to your group, I can do that in exchange of you also speaking to my group or whatever it is. Just make sure it's people that you like and trust and people that are not going to screw you over. Sometimes it's just really easy to do pro bono work, guys. You know, some of us are, you know, yes, we probably established enough that I won't look at free work, but most of my jobs have come in from free interviews or free one-on-ones that I've done with people because people don't realize what I do up until we've started speaking and they realize what they're capable of doing. Because each and every one of us has a message that is of particular value to the whole world, but we just don't know it that somebody would pay for it. So sometimes just offer services for free to an initial group so that you can test what the audience really likes and hates about what you're doing and, you know, perfect it with a real live audience. And it will give you a chance to get in front of, you know, other board members or people that will actually pay you. You know why? Because you just show people that you can actually help them by helping them. And you know what then happens after that? You become that person they know, like and trust. And it's then easier for you to convert such a person because they're already listening to you. They already know you know what you're talking about. And whatever works, you do more of that and teach what's not working. You will always want to look forward to a glorious day, guys. You know what? And when people start saying, wait a minute, Prosper, I see you everywhere. That's what you want as an entrepreneur. Because if people are not seeing you or if people are ignoring you, you are worse than dead. Hmm? Detria says, hello, my friend. I'm doing well. Thank you. I've taken your advice in a group that I'm pro bono and I've added 10 people to pages. Great stuff. I'm happy to see that and I'm happy to hear that. Oh, no, that's fine, Jamie. That's perfectly fine. That's the reason why we do all of this. You know why? Because at the end of the day, we really want to help each other grow. Maybe you are not my customer today, but it doesn't mean somebody who is not in the newsfeed right now is not your customer. Okay? So, guys, next week, I'm going to be starting some sort of a new series. Um, hopefully, it's going to work. I'm going to be making you and helping you market to an audience that actually wants your stuff. So make sure you tune in to that. And I'm going to be helping you to make your message stick. A lot of people don't quite know how to do that as yet. All right. So it's a, it's a three-day series that I'm going to be calling Marketing from the Inside Out. All right. So you really want to marry your business. Okay. Not just hook up with it. So I hope you guys are going to have a fantastic weekend. 
Today has been a very, very long one. An hour session. We've broken the record. Give yourself an applause if you've watched through. Thank you so much. I can never thank you enough. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and um, you know put the notification button because all these videos I will put them onto the YouTube channel, okay? And also I will put out a blog so that you constantly have information that's going to help you package, brand, and market your business so that you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And if you may allow me, I do have a blueprint that you guys can get to, all right? Um, where you can actually get the right kind of client, use the right kind of content, and convert those people into buying customers. If you really want a copy of this, just type in Blueprint, and I'll shoot you through a copy of this. In the meantime, guys, thank you so, so much for tuning in. This has been fantastic. I enjoyed doing this, and I hope you've enjoyed watching this as well. I'm going to go off for the weekend. And, um, yeah, be with my girl and pretty much, um, yeah, just live life as we can. And please, uh, when the video ends, subscribe so that you get notifications whenever we're on. Please share this video again. You guys have been so fantastic. I wouldn't be anywhere without you.